Hi everybody, here's the deal. I'm Larry Tomczak and this is a commentary that I do to help you so that you're equipped with what's happening in our culture today. Now, today is a little more sober uh, theme and I wanna address this with the title, basically, A Heartfelt Appeal to My Friend, Joshua Harris. If you're not familiar, Joshua Harris is a very influential leader in the body of Christ for years, probably decades. Uh, he's the author, maybe you're familiar with the book that he did called I Kiss Dating Goodbye. He did another one here on Boy Meets Girl. Josh is a personal friend. He's not just somebody that's out there, you know, some public figure. And uh, I wanna speak this to you, Josh, that you'll hear this. And then everybody else, just you listen in and I'd encourage you, if you're a parent, a youth leader, uh, whatever, a young person, this would be good to share with people because what I'm gonna share with you is sober, but there's some confusion and there's some real difficulty with what's been happening. Now, Joshua Harris uh, would conduct conferences all over the United States, New Attitude, and uh, his books helped especially young people, my own children, four of them. And um, in time, a church that I was able to establish Basically, with C.J. Mahaney in my apartment, we started, it grew to thousands, a mega church, and in time, that church was entrusted to you, Josh, and you married Shannon, beautiful girl, you've been married almost 20 years now, three children, and um, you know, I remember talking with you, encouraging each other, and I was so indebted to you, your dad, because he introduced us to homeschooling, but Josh, to you, because you were influencing uh, people in terms of uh, biblical principles and foundations of purity and that singles develop their character so they would have stability in marriage and that we not fall prey to the seduction of what's going on in our culture today in terms of living together, fornication, which is sex before marriage, prohibited by the scriptures, and then also the LGBTQ agenda, gay, lesbian, homosexuality, transgender, and you helped also, you know, we're not involved with casual divorce, all the rest of that. So there's hundreds of thousands, Josh, that are indebted to you. But recently, I mean, you talk of a jaw dropper. I'm reading a few days ago that you decided with your wife, you're just gonna end your marriage, separate. I mean, it was a jaw dropper. I about fell out of my chair. And then you went on to say that, you know, you were apologizing to the LGBT community for, I guess you said, you know, not really accepting gay marriage. And then you, you also shocked us by saying, I'm not a Christian. Now, Josh, I'm coming to you because I love you. You're my friend. And I and countless others are praying for you. And I wanna just, if I can, walk with you a little bit down a pathway because you, like all of us, in ministry or in marriage, you face an avalanche of pressures today. I've faced them. I've been married 43 years. Those of you that don't know me, and you know what? We have had adversity and financial reverses and such difficulties at times, but we have always found God to be faithful when we stayed humble and turned to Him. Now, Josh, you've been always faithful to the scriptures. You've taught them, you've written, and in the scripture, it tells us to maintain a biblical worldview. And I know when you wrote, you know, the books, um, you, in time, you showed your humility by making some adjustments, taking biblical principles that were, let's say, put into practice maybe in some ways that could have been, what, legalistic or a little authoritarian, and you humbled and admitted your mistakes. But Josh, now, where you're headed, it scares me. First Timothy chapter 4, and the, the ver first verse there, it says that, you know, basically in the last days, times prior to the return of the Lord, many are going to depart the faith and they're gonna to succumb to seduction. That is not your heart, I know it. It tells us in that same First Timothy 4, a little on, it tells us that we're to pay attention to ourselves and to our teaching, to our doctrine. And I know you wanna be faithful to scripture, but what's happening is dangerous. Now, maybe you and Shannon right now as you're listening, and I trust you are, you say, Larry, you don't know the kind of pressures we've been under, the discouragement. Well, you know what? We all face that. In my 43 years of marriage, there's been times you feel like, can we make it? But you know, as we humbled ourselves, the Bible says in James 4, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And there's times, and maybe you say, Larry, but this is too much, it's gone beyond. I know you can feel that, but first, get this, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says this, no temptation has overtaken you that's not common to man. God is faithful. He'll not let you be tempted beyond your strength, 
But with the temptation, he'll provide a way of escape so that you can endure it. And I want you to know, and you know it in your heart, his grace is there for you. It's his redemption. And I, I would say this, here in the Nashville area where I'm speaking, you know, a little while ago, there was a mega church, very successful. Carrie Underwood went there and others. But to me, you know what happened? The, the leader, and I've talked with the leader and, and given material to appeal to him on this, he began to succumb to some of the cultural forces. And, you know, I think we want our church to be gay affirming. And we want it to be, you know, I don't want to be a bigot. I want to be, a, what would be a, a term, inclusive. And so he began to open the doors to gay, lesbian, and, and all of that. The tragedy was, and I was right there when he's on the platform with his wife and children talking about their marital and difficulties. You know what? In time, he left. The church began to really disintegrate terribly. He spun off into, really, and it was heretical teaching. And now he's left the area, marriage collapsed. It's, it's been a heartbreak and devastating to so many people. Now you say, what, well, Larry, you don't know the extent of the problems. Josh, Shannon, come on, listen. Billy Graham's wife, Ruth, was once asked, and they're both in heaven right now, and he's been a role model to us. Billy's wife was asked, hey, you know, Ruth, did you ever talk about divorce? She said, divorce, no. She said, murder, yes, you know, kind of tongue in cheek. And we faced that. Billy also said as he was aging, he was asked, you know, what's something major you've learned to pass on? And he said, well, you know what I've learned? Basically, how quickly it all goes by. And in this very book that you wrote, I think it's chapter 14, you said something of where will you be at 50? And Josh, you're in your 40s right now. You want your fruit to remain. And I, I remember once sitting in my home when I lived in the D.C. area with a prominent leader. This was one of the most, most successful preachers in America. And he was facing challenges in his home and marriage. And he told me, I was stunned when he said, I'm choosing personal peace over more problems with my wife. And he had, I think it was six or seven children. He went that way, got with another woman, one of his sons, according to somebody, they said, well, he spun off in drugs. It's, it, it's tragic. And I remember talking on the phone with him and as best as I recollect, he was working on the docks. What happened? Well, we don't want to go that way. And so I want to encourage you. You know what, in times like this, come on, you know, if these individuals, just like others, when you face these kind of boulders, it's not a little bump. Number one, you know, you humble yourself and you find good biblical counselors. I'm not talking those that get into psycho babble and victimhood and all this kind of nonsense, but somebody that's true to the scriptures to help you. And it'll take some time. And then you have somebody that you can, in confidence, you say it's confidentiality, put on the table issues. And think of it, in marriage, and if you're a young person, you say, well, I, I want to get married, and you know, I know love will carry me through. Well, it will, biblical love, agape, commitment love. And you know what? If you get with somebody, Josh, come on, Shannon, you talk, we've had financial problems, sexual issues in our marriage, anger issues. Maybe there's been some flirtation. I don't know. Sometimes men say, you know, many, uh, pornography and things like this, generational issues, on and on and on. But you put it on the table and somebody working with you. And also, imagine if these individuals had simply enlisted a company of people that would stand with them in confidentiality and be interceding and praying for them. And then, you know what, I'd also say this, what about coming to that place where you say, we are going to persevere through this. Through faith and patience, the Bible says, you inherit the promises. And so you persevere through it. And you say, we're gonna repent as God shines light on those areas in my life and we're gonna extend forgiveness and we'll press on with tenacity. I'm challenging you. I love you, my brother. There's so much at stake. This is a defining moment and you know it in your life. You know who's praying for you besides countless thousands, hundreds of thousands probably of people? Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Luke 22, remember he said, Simon, Simon. He said, Satan desired to sift you like wheat, but I prayed for you so that you not fail but that when you turn, you're gonna be able to strengthen your brethren. And so Jesus is praying. I think it's Hebrews chapter seven, and, and it tells us there, what does it say? It says that God basically calls us to come to him because he's able to rescue and save to the uttermost everyone that draws near to God through him because Josh, Shannon, he ever lives to make intercession for us. So I'm extending my arms here today and I'm available call me, whatever. 
And those of you listening, be in prayer and get this out to people so that they pray and also their help because people are confused. Josh, there's so many. It's been a reverberation. It's kind of like, how could this be happening? But it's not too late. Come on, man. This is the time he'll resist the proud, but he'll give grace to the humble. And you want to be one that finishes well, and you know that. And you know, Josh, on the cover here, here's the person, whoever, whether it was you or a model, looking down, you know, and not up. I don't want you to do this. I want you to look up. It's like, take that hat off, look up to the hills, look unto the Lord, and say, Father, I need you like never before. We need you like never before. There's so much at stake. You know what you wrote here about, I kiss dating goodbye? I appeal with all my heart. Don't kiss your marriage goodbye. Stand strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. I'm for you. God's for you. You're going to see this through. This is a redemptive, encouraging word for you and for everyone listening today. Get the word out and let's see a trophy to the glory of God in this situation.